tonight, let's dissect some of the issues that have been thrown up. I'm being joined by the executive governor of Kogi State, and the man that's been just announced as the, the youth coordinator of the APC and Tinubu campaign, presidential campaign council, Governor Yaya Bello. He joins us live virtually from Lokoja, the capital of Kogi State. Thank you, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. And let's begin by saying uh, maybe congratulations might be in order, as you recognize as a very uh, strong uh, tool in ensuring your party's uh, victory at the polls. But w one will wonder why the youth coordinator, uh, you run against Bolatinobu uh, other primaries, and you had the confidence that you were going to defeat him. Now, you are going to be working closely with him. How does the announcement come with you? Is this something that you are aware of before the announcement? Uh, did he discuss it with you, or this came to you as a surprise? Thank you very much. Good evening, Sheung uh, Okimbaloye. Good evening, viewers within the country and across the world. Um, my appointment and pronouncement as the national coordinator of Nigerian youths for the presidential campaign of Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu and Shetima uh, for the next 2023 general election is a welcome idea. I appreciate and I accept that responsibility. It is one appointment that is welcome, appreciated, and uh, across the whole country by Nigeria youths, women, people living with disabilities, and even elders, especially the credible ones and credible elites across the country. So I sincerely appreciate that. Uh, it's, um, I, it's more or less like a surprise to me because um, after the presidential primaries, we had two or three encounters with uh, our leader and our presidential candidates, you know, and uh, we talk generally about the party, the country, and the way forward to for our party, especially the general election. So it came to me as a more or less a surprise. However, um, I'm always capable, I'm ready at any point in time. And uh, this is an indication that our leader and our candidate is a man that have eyes for the good thing. It's a man that is ready to, uh, uh, you know, utilize square peg on a square hole. It's a man that have eyes for solving problems and providing solutions for, for, for problems. So identifying me to come and cheer or champion the cause of Nigerian youth in the next general election for our victory uh, has really shown that that is the man that we really need we need his capacity, we need his intellectual sagacity to be able to take the country to the next level. Um, you recall that in 2014-2015, I and a few of my colleagues, of my fellow Nigerian youths, we formed, found, and ran Kogi Youth Arise Group, one of the most formidable groups that championed the cause of uh, Muhammadu Buhari struck Oshimba in the 2015 general elections. And we delivered massively that particular election for President Muhammadu Buhari and Vice President Yoni Oshimba and all other of our candidates within Kogi State. You will recall that President Muhammadu Buhari has never won Kogi State in all of his outings, except starting from 2015 and 2019. Then in 2019, I, by the special grace of God, being uh, the executive governor, was able to mobilize, galvanize, sensitize all of Nigerian uh, uh, no, Kogi youths and deliver more than the, the, the numbers we had in 2015. Then along the line, I was append, appointed as the uh, chairman uh, committee on youth, women, and people living with disabilities mobilization sensitization into our party during the registration, where I was able to mobilize over 41 million Nigerians and still counting into our party. 
I could remember that there are so many Nigerian uh, youths who were disenchanted and refused to join politics. So I was able to convince them, and they joined our party. So, and then, of course, moving into that uh, presidential primaries, everybody knew that I was going to be the, uh, the, 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 the candidate to beat in the general election. Campaign for general election is different from primaries. But at primary level, that is what the elites within the party have decided. And I am just super okay with that. I was able, I thank God, I thank my party, I thank the leadership of my party for giving me the opportunity to buy, to run, and learn from the champion of the game, which is Senator Bala Ahmed Tinubu. I've learned enough, and I'll continue to learn from his wealth of experience in politics and life achievements. So I welcome this uh, development, and I am going to use my own wealth of experience my energy and everything at my disposal, not only to coordinate, but to mobilize, to sensitize, to educate, and to tell ourselves, the younger generation, both men and women, what Nigeria is all about, what I have come to realize about Nigeria politics and how we shall go and where we should go, which is to vote en masse for Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu stroke Hashim Shetima. Not only that, but equal, equally to you know, mobilize for all of our candidates, governorship, Senate, rep, assembly from across the country. Because we have the number, we have the contact, and I am in constant touch with all of our uh, structures down to polling unit level before the primary elections. And it is still intact. All right. So, um, yeah, Governor Bello, why do you think Balatinobu uh, picked you for this role? Yes, like I, I, I enumerated earlier, um, he has seen my past, you know, performances, and he knows that I am a party man to the core. I have said it severally that APC is my first political party, and it will be my last political party. And there's no reason why I will jump gone. Learning from our leader, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, our presidential candidate, His Excellency, who has been very consistent. He has been one politician that has been very sincere and very consistent. He never changed political party, except when ACN was merging with other political parties to form this very uh, treasure of ours today called APC. So now looking at me, and knowing fully well that I have that integrity and the pedigree and the connection with the Nigerian youth across board, those that are political and those that are apolitical. Now, he knows that I, uh, I mean, I, I fit in very well, and I am a square peg in a square hole. Who will galvanize and mobilize and coordinate all the Nigerian youth, irrespective of their background, for the victory of our next uh, general elections. And surely, it is just, um, we're just waiting for, to fulfill all righteousness, and then we shall march towards the villa by the grace of God to take over from President Muhammadu Buhari, and then ride on from there. All right, now, so uh, a few people will be curious about the, the choice of Governor Yaya Bello as uh, the youth coordinator of the campaign. Uh, do you see yourself as a youth? Uh, fundamentally, are you a youth? Let me, let me tell you, I am a young man. And youth is defined by whatever you might use as yardstick. There are, today, you will have 50-year-old men that are still feeding from their mother, that are still, you know, more or less behaving like toddlers. And today, you can even see an 18-year-old um, uh, uh, a teenager who will behave and act more or less like an adult. Today, I consider myself a young man, a bridge between the very young and the very old and the middle age. As a governor who assumed office at the age of 40, which was the age of youth, and now today, 47, who have performed and have taught the lives of the citizens of Kogi State, 
who have bring on board youth revolution in Kogi State and women revolution in Kogi State. He knows surely that I have that touch with the Nigerian youth across the country and that I'm going to bring that experience All right. on board. So, so yeah. as a young man, I am a bridge between the two uh, strata. So I, I've, one would probably wonder that the nomenclature of the role that you are being given maybe would have been the National Young People Coordinator, uh, not Youth Coordinator. Considering the Nigerian National Youth Policy, which upgraded or reviewed uh, the age classification of the youth in Nigeria. Before 2019, the age classification of a youth was between the age of 18 and 35. But now it is between the age of 15 and 29. You are almost double that age right now of 29, which is a, a classification based on the Nigerian national youth policy. So the question is that you are no longer a youth. As far as that classification, you are 47 years of age uh, of the, yeah. from your last birthday. And, and the question is whether or not you have uh, a direct connection with the youth of today. Some of them we will be 18 years at the next Nigerian uh, uh, general election. So uh, you are out of that bracket based on the national youth policy. Do you still think that you are perfect fit for that role? Like I said, I am a young man in my uh, late 40s. And if you look at those that are around me today and those that are governing today, in Kogi State, from state to local government, they are basically youth. I am the bridge between the young and the old. I am the one that understands the language, metamorphosing graduating, growing from that young age to my middle age now, I am most connected with the younger generation. Come and look at the last um, our outings you know, prior to the presidential uh, convention. Nobody in this country today that understands the language of the younger generation and youth because everything we do today in Kogi State are centered on younger generation and youth. So with that connectivity, I think our leader deem it necessary. And I think yeah. I have so, that connectivity. So now I'm, I'm, I'm also curious to know how you hope to connect with them. Where would you find this youth that you are uh, being sad with responsibility of coordinating the youth that are possibly going to be voting in 2023 February, and you probably will be cajoling them or talking to them, wooing them to vote for your candidate. Where would you be finding them? The youth of today, where are they found majorly? Where is the attention? Youth, youth of today, Nigeria youth today, are uh, everywhere. They are here in Nigeria. They are here in Nigeria, and uh, we have had that connection already. It is a base that um, more or less pour me into contest. So, and um, it, it is it's continued to increase. It continues to to swell. Remember, just a few months back, I coordinated, I mobilized, I sensitized, I educated Nigerian youth and younger generation, and even older ones who have youthful hearts as well, to join our party. Already we have that number in our party. And I can assure you, uh, Shion, that in the next general election, we are going to sweep the next vote. And they will believe me because of my performance in Kogi State, because they believe that when I speak, I speak the truth, I will never deceive them. What? And because I have seen our candidate, his pedigree, his integrity, his ability, to choose and go for the best. And I am ready to stake my integrity for that. They believe me, and we are going to make a difference. I mean, some of these young people that, uh, that you will be coordinating, I'm trying to get their attention, some of them are very angry. Some of them have not been in school since February. Some of them are upset about the state of things. In fact, some of them want to get out at a very, I mean, 
little opportunity they have outside of the country. Uh, you are a member of the APC. Your party is at the end of affairs. I wonder what you will be telling them, considering the NSAS phenomenon and the manner in which it was handled, um, uh, what will you be telling some of these young people who are, a majority of them are the NSAS advocates? I will tell them the truth and nothing but the truth that I am known for. First of all, the strikes, the agitation, and the various menace that is going on today in our educational sector and some other sectors are completely uncalled for. I am going to tell them, and we shall tell them, we shall insensitize them to be able to differentiate between political problems using this particular uh, menace, those who are actually holding them back at home and why they are being held back at home. We're going to tell them and how we shall take our destinies in our hands, just like our leader, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, our candidate, His Excellency, have identified me, knowing how much I have performed in Kogi State, whereby I inherited um, or I assumed office when all the tertiary institutions were locked down, were on strike in Kogi State, and including secondary and tertiary teachers were all on strike when I assumed office. But upon assumption of office up to the six years counting now, no one single strike in Kogi State. I had the political will and I applied it. So we're going to tell them those, not APC, not President Muhammad Buhari, not Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, our candidates, but those who have been held, in, who held them down. And they'll be held accountable. The most important thing is, very good thing by Mr. President is that Mr. President will give you your own responsibility to carry out. If you fail, you'll be held accountable. So we are going to hold these people accountable. But for any other political party to now use it as a tool, using ASU, using any other institution as a tool for political campaign, we are going to tell them the truth. And our Nigerian youth, is going, they will open their eyes and they will see in between the lines and then we should take Gov Governor Bello, decision. Governor Bello, uh, for those who are of the opinion that the NSAS advocates or the young people who took to the streets of Nigeria protesting in the NSAS, they still have somewhere in their belly the anger uh, that they poured out in the NSAS. And perhaps uh, for those who are of the opinion that majority of them are the anti-APC. Uh, majority of them have uh, shown interest in other movements uh, that is not uh, pro your party. Uh, how do you convince them, those who are perhaps looking angry against your political party in the APC? Let me tell you, first point where the NSAS are supposed to vent their anger was to have participated politically in the selection of who becomes our candidate in the various political parties. That is number one. Street protest and agitation is completely different from voting, election, and electoral process. And you recall that I am the only or the very first governor who identified with the NSAS uh, protest. And I made myself known, I think three times I had to address the NSAS protesters at that time. And they listened to me, especially those who attempted to rear their, 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 their head in Kogi State. Yeah, I was able to point it out to them, the difference. And even after the NSAS, after the protest, I had the opportunity of meeting with the leadership, some of the leadership of the NSAS, and I told them exactly where they got it wrong. So I am equally going to tell them, I will sensitize them, I will educate them where they are headed or how they will get it wrong if they did not follow the right way. And the right way is to vote Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who will come and display his, um, his prowess in solving uh, the problems that we are being confronted with. All right, Governor Bello, let's take a breather. And when we return, our conversation continues with you. And on the Nigerian youth, 
and you, the agenda of the APC for them, as you have the responsibility of coordinating them, as well as Ahmed Tunubu has given you that responsibility. We take a break, everyone, and when we come back, our conversation continues right here on the program. We'll be right back. Thank you, everyone, for staying with us right here on the program. Governor Yaya Bello has been announced as the National Youth Coordinator of the Bolatunubu Shatima Presidential Campaign Organization of the APC. He's been speaking with us. He's the Executive Governor of Kogi State. He's live with us uh, virtually from Lokoja, the Kogi State capital. Your Excellency, uh, just for some more questions before we, uh, we allow you to enjoy the rest of your evening. The, I was speaking about the youth population. It's now clear from what the ANAP NOI poll revealed that um, if election were conducted on the day that they released a report that the Labour Party presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, would emerge as the next president of Nigeria. And you will see that um, if you look at the conversation online, Majority of those who have taken up the obedient movement under the Peter O.B. presidential mandate are majority of young people. Do you see this? Does this come as a threat to you? And how do you think that you can work um, considering the fact that some of these young people seem to have caught uh, s some uh, bug about the obedient movement? <laughs> When, uh, during the contest, before the presidential primaries of all political parties, the only person that commands and commands the respect and control of Nigerian youth is Governor Ihabelo. Peter Obi, I respect him. A gentleman, one-time governor, a businessman who everybody knows have engaged in several, you know, uh, businesses, including importation of majority of the products we consume today in the country. He's doing, he's doing well in his own right. But let me tell you, first, online um, agitation or whatever is different from grassroots movement and mobilization. Prior to my re-election in 2019, um, Two prominent citizens conducted an um, opinion poll about my winning the election in Kogi State. And they marked me down. I simply laugh because they are not on ground. They fly in the sky. They don't move by the road. They don't know. They don't have connection at all with the people. I knew exactly what I, I had put on ground and the connectivity I had on ground. And I won the election like never before in the history of Kogi State. In this coming election, you will see strategy. You will know that Governor Ihabelo of the All Progressive Congress, the executive governor of Kogi State, have the command of and respect of the Nigerian youth. And of course, they are looking forward to me coordinating them and directing them aright. Like I said, the step that our candidate, Senator Bola Ahmed Tunubu, have taken in appointing me to lead the way, coordinate the youth, is an indication that his government come 29th of May 2023, when he would have been sworn in as President Bola Ahmed Tunubu, is an indication that he is going to be pro-youth, pro-younger generation pro-Nigerian. He is going to be out for merit. He's going to be out for, you know, quality. Who can solve the problem devoid of any sentiment? Anybody would have, everybody would have assumed that, look, as, uh, as an aspirant, as a co-aspirant to him before the, the, the presidential election, that he wouldn't have uh, even looked my way. Some people do, does that. You know, of these other political parties, some other political parties who are fighting themselves even long after the presidential you know, uh, uh, con uh, primaries. But look at the way, you know, our leader, uh, Senator Bola Ahmad Tinubu, is going about his campaign now, making sure that everybody come on board. So for him to have identified me and brought me on board, meaning 
he is kind of that kind of leader who will have the listening ear of the Nigerian youth. And let me tell you something. By the special grace of God, Nigerian youths will determine, will run the affairs and government of Senator Bola Ahmad Tunubu when he's sworn in. He will provide the lead, he will provide the expertise, he will provide the experience for all the Nigerian youths to, for us to be able to bear, I mean, they take our footing. Today, we are doing that in Kogi State here. All Nigerian youths, our women, our citizens in Kogi State are seeing it exactly. And that is why he's choosing the right example to show to Nigerians, to show Nigerian youths, so that they will understand exactly where he's coming from and where he's headed. On a, on a final note, uh, Mr. Governor, do you regret this statement, which has caused a lot of stare in your state? And the opposition seems to be very unhappy with it. And it has been described as a brazen threat from you against them. And that um, some of them have described it as a terror statement. And uh, in that statement, you were quoted to have said, uh, which was interpreted into English language, to have said, quote, I will personally light a fierce fire in my hand. Whoever want it, we shall use it to burn them. Whoever survive it will thank God. Whoever is against us, we will make him or her join my mother and lie with her. I mean, your mother in, 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 in bracket, in grave. End of quote. These are some of the words attributed to you. But it has been interpreted as a threat and a message of terror on the opposition in your state. Do you regret that statement or the intent of it? Let me take, let me just take a, little, a little time. Uh, when I assumed office as the executive governor of Kogi State, on 27th of January 2016, Kogi State used to be the terror capital for kidnappers. It used to be the, the, the headquarters for kidnappers, armed robbers, bandits, Iswap, Boko Haram, and what have you. I'm sure you know that there are sessions of Kogi State where bombs have been made in the past. And then people crossing the north to the south and south to the north will hold their breath in Kogi State as at the time they came on board. I'm sure if you go back to history, you know that Central and some other parts of this country used to witness serious you know, violence during election hearing. Now, Sheon, I mean my words that whoever wants to bring back the dark days of terror, of reign of terror of bandits, kidnappers, Iswap, and what have you, in the disguise or in the guise of politics, will meet stiff opposition here in Kogi State. I will be too happy to be a terror to kidnappers. I will continue to be a terror to Iswap. I will continue to be a terror to bandits. I will continue to be a terror to Boko Haram and all forms of crimes and criminalities in the state. And I will continue to act accordance with the rule of law that everybody have known where I was able to bring Kogi State to, you know, uh, an eligible height in terms of security, in terms of unity, in terms of development, in terms of everything that has to do with deliverance of good governance and dividend of democracy to our people. Those today that are crying foul, if they are ready to play by the rules of the game, let them come. They are my citizens. I am constitutionally empowered to protect them, to protect lives and livelihood, just at, like I've been, I've been doing. I will not spare anything to fight anybody who will come and destroy our properties. In 2019, there are a lot of our properties, our, our, our assets, scarce, using our scarce resources to fix in this state. They came, they destroy our, our, our floodlights, they destroy our streetlights, they deface our, our streets, they break down you know, a lot of things. I am not going to allow that. We are building a new Kogi state, a prosperous Kogi state, a very formidable, secured Kogi state, an economically viable Kogi state. A state that is not referring to opposition parties. Other states, yeah, You're whereby not... we are bringing everybody together. I am not going to allow that. So, I will so, remain so go, the, go the, the, the chief executive officer 
the chief security officer till the last second All right. I am leaving the office. So you're... And I'm not going to allow anybody to jeopardize it. So what you're telling them is that you are not making direct yeah. reference to opposition party and political uh, conversations. You are only talking about insecurity. Is that what you meant? When I caution criminals, criminals don't know themselves. And they know that I am ready and I'm up and waiting for them. And I'll deal decisively with them. Criminals know themselves. Thank you so much, uh, Governor Yaya Bello, for making those clarifications. Uh, the governor of uh, Kogi State, Governor Yaya Bello, who has been as appointed as the national coordinator of, for the youth in the APC Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Nigerians. Thank you, Nigerian youth, for giving me the opportunity Thank to you. serve you in this capacity once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.